This segment brought to you by SureCrop. Liquid crop nutrition delivered right to your farm. We're back. Now Dwayne and Matthew Malika discuss the Honey Bee Health Coalition. Dwayne Thames joining you once again here on uh, Ag AM in Kansas, and an opportunity to catch up with Matt Malika talking about uh, Honey Bee Health. Certainly an, an issue for those that are associated with the business, but many people outside of it really have no idea exactly what we're talking about and, and why it's an issue. Sure. So uh, my name is Matthew Malika. I work for the Honey Bee Health Coalition. I'm a facilitator. And so we uh, are a coalition of 40 or so member organizations, uh, everyone from uh, agribusiness and universities to uh, beekeeping organizations, nonprofits, uh, universities, and um, uh, crops. And so we're really at the intersection of crop production and honeybee health, trying to work on issues of uh, improving honeybee health as, as we're all part of the same agricultural system. We think about uh, the wide variety of crops and fruits and vegetables that, uh, that rely on honeybees as a form of, of uh, making that, uh, that process happen. Many in commercial uh, row crop agriculture don't typically see the need for it. Yeah, ex exactly. So one in three bites of the food we eat uh, are uh, pollinated. And so you have um, crops. The, uh, the First, the bees start in almonds. You have 1.6 million hives that go to almonds each year. California supplies 85% of the world's almonds. And so without, without honeybees, there really isn't any... Um, almonds in the world. Then they go up to um, you know Oregon, and they go to the berries and melons, uh, all of our uh, peppers, uh, and then a lot of our citrus is, is um, uh, has pollination services. And so, really, really an important part of the agricultural system. And uh, their health is in jeopardy. Usually, uh, beekeepers would see anywhere from 15 to 30 percent losses in a, in a given year. Now they're seeing 40, 50, 60 percent losses. Um, from from many factors. Uh, there's no one factor that is causing honeybee health decline. It's really a, a series of factors. It is um, a lack of forage. It is um, uh, adverse impacts from pesticides. And then it's uh, pests and pathogens like the varroa mite. And so the Honeybee Health Coalition has come together and is working on all of these issues um, in, in various working groups. And so we uh, have been around for about three years and have been making really positive impacts. Um, we uh, we developed a um, the managed pollinator protection plan symposium, uh, which was a which was a, a an effort where we worked with uh, the uh, National Association of State Departments of Ag and the EPA and um, Pollinator Stewardship Council to. Uh, bring together um, draft language for MP3s and, and help give guidance to the state-led MP3 efforts. Uh, we've come up with the Tools for Varroa Management Guide, um, which is a, a guide that explains to people how to do varroa management, how to monitor and treat, as well as a series of 12 videos. Um, we have made USDA recommendations on forage, and uh, we're working with the uh, Bee and Butterfly Habitat Fund to, to put pollinator forage on the ground uh, in the U.S. And so a lot of great um, um, work being done and, and really we're just trying to create and, and provide recommendations and, and on systems that where production ag and and beekeeping can can really work together and that there's not that, that there's not a you know this isn't going to work on, on my lands uh, mentality that we we're really all working together and in, in um in being all part of one agricultural system well certainly it doesn't matter whether you're a, a consumer of honey or a number of other products that bees uh, pollinate uh, those individuals in that end of production agriculture or the beekeepers themselves Making sure that uh, we continue to improve bee health uh, has a major impact on our food supply here in the U.S. Jamie, we'll send it back to you. Thanks, Dwayne. Come back after the break for this week's Kansas Farm Bureau update. Brought to you in part by the 65th Annual Eskridge Labor Day Rodeo, September 2nd and 3rd. If you love rodeo, mark your calendar right now for the 65th Annual Labor Day Rodeo in Eskridge, September 2nd and 3rd at 7 p.m. This is entertainment for your whole family, calf roping, steer mugging, barrel racing, and more. Now let's rodeo. 